PC Cortina City back for another a tech vid today. We finished the bay. We'll have a little look how the first 300 miles clocked onto it before we move on. This was after the fire. If you don't know what I mean, click back a few videos that I've uploaded. You'll see this engine bay recently caught fire. We're now back on and back in the game. So, um, how did this settle in? Well, no leaks. It settled in very nicely, so there's nothing actually to do. Just checking that the rocker cover managed to uh, perform without leaking using the rubber gasket on the rocker cover as opposed to the cork one. Cork ones do work, but I've found better performance reliability out the rubber rocker cover gaskets from Burton's. They're about six quid, I think. Anyway, you can see we haven't had any leaks there. We're not splashing any oil up from the cam belt, which was one of the original faults that we did have. That was before the fire, where the cam belt, I think it was leaking from the rocker cover myself. It caused the cam belt to eventually perish and snap. We didn't do any damage luckily on that one. Again, that's on one of the earlier videos, but looking and keeping my eyes out for any potential oil leaks, perhaps the only one a very slight weep on the t-piece but it looks like after nipping that up i'm going to rub that with my fingers here and no there's nothing there i think we're okay so well, what we'll do record down the mileage now and mark the filter up record down the mileage on the air filter it's actually got a k&n filter in it so we'll make a note here that k&n's on but you still need to clean the k&n one i think it's every fifty thousand miles that's a K&N reusable air pan filter. It's a, I think it's a 3695 filter. They've actually stopped making them at the moment. I managed to get one old stock. 1210 will go in on the K&N filters. Very tight fit. Wouldn't recommend a 1210. So really, we've come back from a, a trip up to the lakes at the weekend. You might have seen it on the Cortina City Facebook live chat. We're done with that. It's, it's, it's finished. We can move on. And indeed, we are going to move on now to something else. Okay, we're going to move on to a new phenomenon. 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 I cannot do that. And that is the latest high bright H high high intensity discharge xenon LED lights that are causing blinding issues for me. I'm getting light reflecting in this mirror. I don't think there's much I can do about that. That's not as bad as the rear view mirror lamp reflection that I'm getting off these. Uh, Mini Clubmen seem to do it. Range Rovers seem to do it, whereby their very bright lights are sat higher up. Of course, because a lot of these new vehicles now, they're sitting a little bit higher and Cortina's are low, 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 low. So, you get the entire cabin, and you might have experienced this. Tell me, let me know in the comments if you have. Your whole cabin lights up with these new high-intensity high lights, and then it refracts all over the place. And I think to do with the spectrum of the light, um, with the new lights, the spectrum of the light tends to be much in more intense and bright, and I find it hurts my eyes, especially when it's bouncing off the mirrors. So I'm having problems with that. You can get nighttime driving glasses. You can double check your eyesight and stuff. Of course, these things can have a factor on it. Age can also have a factor on it. But all of those things aside, I still think that they're too bright. And I think that they've, they've gone off wattage and not lumens. The so lumens being the uh, light intensity output. So if they've gone off wattage, the equivalent wattage can do double the lumens with new technology lighting. So what you find is, whilst they're very safe for the person driving the car, and I'm all for that, it's, the problem is, is that the level adjustment of them is such that they're coming into the car and hitting the mirror. So they're hitting my rear view mirror there, and I'm having to, to dip the mirror all the time. Even in worse situations, I'm, I'm having to actually cover the mirror, wing mirror or the door mirror or actually move it away for like a minute at the traffic lights when they're just completely lighting me up and it's just so bright i'm getting back from nighttime trips now with sore eyes now i'm prepared to accept that my age 
may have a factor on this. However, I don't have any problems with the normal halogen lamps. So it is a new thing. It's never going to be stopped unless the manufacturers begin to roll out a new way of doing it where the lights are, have some level of technology applied to them where they would dip. I think you're still going to be stuck with what's left on the road right now. That's the problem that we've got. So how to tackle it is difficult. Now Bramble, that's the other, that's the two-door silver Cortina that I've got, the GXL two-door. That's got a electronically dipping rear view mirror, which will does help. It's easier driving Bramble at night than it is Swampy, that's my blue GXL, or Ruby, the maize yellow. So for that reason that it's worked on the silver GXL, I'm now gonna put the same dip dimmable mirror on to this car because this car does the most miles so to do that I'm hoping it's going to help a little bit it's never going to solve the problem I hope that it helps a little bit with these new high, in high intensity lights that we've got these days it's a shame because I'm all for good lighting technology and indeed my halogen lamps are upgraded I'm, I'm pretty bright you know with mine so I'm not against that it just seems to be the way that they're adjusted. Just adjust. So, we don't know if we can ever get round it, but we can maybe take some of the edge off it by putting this Mondeo electronically adjustable mirror onto my Cortina. Now, the shape of it is not much different than a standard Cortina mirror in terms of the proportion of this. Uh, the ratio of it so slightly wider but it doesn't look a million miles out let's have a look at a mirror here look there's one in there now of course there's one in there what are you talking about um, there it is I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do we'll come inside and let's just quickly sit in and have a look at that mirror okay now that could be a um, I do not, a Donnelly, it could be, it's not going to be a Gentex, it could be a Wingard, it's a Donnelly. So we've got a Donnelly there, there's, there's three types, although Wingard I don't think are in business anymore. Donnelly I think still are, and Gentex tend to be the people making most of them. Now that's a Cortina mirror, although do you know what, this is actually a slightly wider than standard Cortina mirror. But it's virtually the same. I'll show you an actual, actual Cortina mirror, which is in the bin. Because I used it to, to, to salvage some parts. You'll see why in a sec. That's if we can find it. It's buried in here. Bin day has changed and caught me out because of the Christmas. No, it was in there. It's a little bit smaller than the one you've just seen in here. It doesn't really matter about that. The point is, is that it's not going to stand out as such. And indeed, on, on Bramble, you don't really notice it. So it's colour coded in. So I've used my um, interior colour scheme, which is called Ruby, to paint this mirror. Quite easy to do, as long as you key and prep the plastic surfaces and you use the right paint, you can get it. I use a paint called... Uh, colour bond here it is and this paint is good for plastics I used it on the air filter as well you do have to prime and prep properly with that you could use normal paint if you were going to use normal paint rattle cam paint then you would put an epoxy primer on there first to key it after you've just very lightly go over I use thinners but you've got to be careful with thinners because it'll attack the grain that nice grain that you've got there but if you quickly wipe it, it degreases it. You can get a degreaser as well. Indeed, there's a degreaser here, look. Slow drying degreaser. But, but, this is the thing that I found out. If you use thinners, it's, it does key it better than a degreaser does. It starts to attack the plastic, right? So you've got to be quick, you wipe it quick before it starts to melt into it. And I've found when I've done that, that it's much better scratching than just using the epoxy primer when you've used a degreaser. So, the prepped and prepared that, 
got it ready and then we have to adapt it because it comes with the stick on store modern cars of course all to do with uh, safety things break off when you have an accident and stuff so they're not sharp objects so they, they come with a quite a large ball and socket join and here's the remains of the ball and socket join that was fitted to this mirror large ball and socket there as opposed to a mark 3 cortina ball and socket or a wingard one fitted on escorts granadas fitted up on many many cars again designed to break out on impact the also the stalk is here that's designed to break away on impact out of its socket all part of the uh, safety features that were coming in quite prominently after the uh, the 70s uh, beginning of the 70s all these safety features crumple zones and stuff like that so more safer interiors crash pads break off toggle switches for your lights things that wouldn't hurt you that become dangerous objects in a collision so part of that was they started to come up with break it, break away plastic pieces especially on dangerous items like a wing mirror stalk that would could punch a hole in your skull if it's fixed solid sorry about the graphic imagery anyway their one in this case Mondeo is a large ball and socket fitting which we're going to use by cutting it it's been sliced and a steel insert into the empty cavity of the ball and socket then tapping it I fitted the original receptacle from a Mark III mirror. I've not used this one here, but this is that's a clone of it there. This, they're both the same. I had two. I didn't pop this one out. I had one already popped out of its socket. A spare in the spares tub. That is just emulated. So I say I've used this. I've copied the shape of this. Can you see that shape there? It's a flattened, a flattened off shape designed to fit in to the stalk here and lock on which it does but that was an old bolt so I've screwed the bolt into the ball and socket so that we can use the original ball and socket but it then is shaped and drilled and tapped out to receive this stalk so we can screw that stalk in to there like that that would then fit on the back of the mirror so you're basically gonna have this at the back of the mirror so it looks like an original fitting or it is an original fitting going into a new mirror you could have kind of like adapted this ball and socket into the back of this perhaps if you wanted like this it would require a bit, a bit more plastic engineering this system i've done drop straight in we just go in there like so and that gives you the socket at the back and now the stalk can fit and the mirror will look much more Cort Mark III Cortina-ish. So that does that bit. That gets us the mirror. So you can do this on your car if you want. Look forward to seeing these fitted on your cars if, if these high bright lights are dazzling you. It won't take all the dazzle away, but it certainly helps keep the wolf from the door. Now then, let's see what else we've got. That wolf is from the door. There's the, the clip. It goes on the outside. We've got the internals now to look at, which have been stored away in the drawer here here they are our internals bubble wrapped up and it's not too bad a job to do everyone great air uh, design by gentex two pieces of glass with a gel in between them sandwiched in and then electrical current is passed between it which causes the mirror to dim and this circuit board here is the controller of the current it's a light sensor and uh, there's two light sensors on it and a current controller to alter the electrical voltage and current in the gel that's sandwiched between these two pieces of mirrored glass here is the rear facing sensor just there coming in a little bit for you Hang on, let's point it out a bit better. That's the rear sensor. And you've got an ambient sensor here at the front. So the mirror looks both ways with its light sensors. One facing forwards, that little window you see there. And one built into the glass facing backwards. 
how it works is this that this one at the fa front facing one is the ambient level the mirror will only come online when it starts to get dark so it doesn't actually do much in the daytime because this is brightly lit the mirror says well I'm in a brightly lit situation you wouldn't need to have the mirror dimming because your eyes are adjusted for bright light and anyone high beaming you uh, your iris of your eye is of course wider sorry uh, narrower and there's no need to have the dimming system working indeed you want this as bright as you can most of the time but when the ambient level drops this sensor receives less light the forward facing one the mirror then is ready to say okay if needed i will now activate and it will activate if you shine light onto this sensor so when the car that horrible car with them horrible lights well it's not a horrible car the guy who's bought the car he doesn't know any better it's the manufacturers that's the fault not the owner of the car it's the manufacturer i'm not talking about people who high beam you that's different a genuine person's bought a vehicle they're happy that's got bright lights on it i understand that they don't mean to do this although sometimes you do seem to take it personally because emotions are involved but they don't mean to do it their lights come into your cabin and they're so bright and so set high that it's able to strike your mirror whereas normally it wouldn't be able to do that it'll hit that sensor there the mirror detects the fact that there's, there's someone's you know lighting your cab up and then activates the current on those two uh, electrical connections you see the two white wires there sending the current to the gel or the chemical that's sandwiched between the glass mirror then begins to dim proportional to the amount of light it's seeing on this sensor and that is it so all you need to do with this is to connect 12 volts to it it's got three wires a ground a 12 and a reverse light connection now you might say what's reverse lights for i can understand the power feed to it you'd come on with the ignition there's one more cable that you connect to your reverse uh, lights and that is so that when you're in the dark and you hit reverse that at least your mirror isn't dimming down and you can reverse backwards because you would wouldn't want to have it blacked out if there's something behind you that was bright and then you couldn't quite see something in front of those lights in other words don't have your mirror dimming when you're in reverse that's what i'm trying to say so that third wire shuts the mirror down you don't have to have that if you don't want this will still work with just two cables positive 12 volts and and uh, negative so just 12 volt feed the multi-plug is here for it there and indeed you can see that it's got three cables now i don't know the wiring output for this i should have wrote it down when i did brambles but i didn't so i'm gonna have to reverse engineer it again now all we really have to do is find out the ground wire because the other two you can apply 12 to them without damaging it. If I put 12 onto the ground wire, it's possible I'm going to damage this. So we don't want to damage the mirror. I've Googled, can't find the colours on the internet. So we're going to have to use our meter to establish which one of those wires is ground. You may say that it's going to be the black wire, but it's not always the case. For example, the speed sensor on this car, the vehicle speed sensor that's connected to the back of the gearbox for the cruise control that we've got has the black wire as the 12 volt feed so you never know you've got to just go and meter this out and how we would meter it out to find ground is by connecting the plug to the circuit board and then we know that some of the capacitors here are on ground on the casings and we know that quite often on on these uh, circuit chips that pin 4 is often the ground and pin 8 is often the positive You'll also find that the ground wire is connected to lots of things on the board. So we would look for a common clue and then plug this plug in, put the, the continuity tester onto one of the pins, or we can look up the code of this chip and see which pin is ground on the chip and just look for continuity between that and one of these three wires here. As soon as it bleeps out, we know that's the ground, that's the ground cable. Once you've established the ground cable, we can connect a, a, a low voltage power, a low current power supply, a one amp bench power supply with a circuit cut off on it. 
overload or short circuit cut off on it, a safety power supply in other words, connect that to the uh, remainder of the other two wires. One will be reversed and will have no action. The other one, you should see the mirror dimmed down by applying a torch to this sensor there whilst simultaneously blocking the lamp to the ambient sensor at the back and we'll see it dim. Indeed, I know that can work because that's exactly what I did on the other car. So what I'm saying, I've done all this before. I'm just going over what I've already done. I don't film, think I filmed it as extensively as this. It was briefly covered. It's one of the reasons I'm going over it again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to film any more on that, except to say that you'll see this with the cable coming out of the back. We can't route it through the stalk. Unfortunately, there's not enough room really to put that on. You would have to put that on some kind of machine that could send a drill bit all the way through and create a cavity. I think it's, there's not enough meat there to do that, to get a cable through. So we can't put the cable through the stalk, unfortunately. So we have to exit out of the casing with a grommet. You can't see once it's in the car and it's, it's a compromise I can live with. So we would then have the power feed coming out, the mirror assembled and ready to fit into the car. Hardest part for me will be routing the cable down. I don't think that I left provision for it when I built this car. I wish that I had. There are some cables up there for the sat-nav feed, but they're five volt feeds. So you could use one of the cables. I could pull through. It's a gamble. I could pull through, but I've got to get a cable up the pillar. And I tend to use a nylon fishing wire and push up and try and hook out and get the power feed across. Or I have left the power feed in there thinking ahead. It's possible. I'm not going to know till I take the interior light out. That's my issue. We'll work it out. Also, another job I've got to do is fix the, the bushing on this is gone so that the, the, the blade doesn't park right, which is very annoying. That should be there. Extremely annoying. And you'll see what's happened. Look, we have play in that bush. We need to put a new a new bush here. I thought they were new. Anyway, I noticed that uh, it's been bugging me for a while. That should be parked nice and straight. Very, very annoying. Anyway, cable up. You've seen how I've built this. We're going to get that fitted and we'll go and road test it and see. We'll take a night trip out in this film. Just see if we can see the difference. In fact, really, if I'm going to do a night trip, I could really do with showing you what it's like currently, which is awful. Which would mean parking up and waiting for a car to blind me, which seems to be getting more and more frequent. Are you crazy? Backwards. Are you crazy? Frequent. I'm not a puddy cat. Okay. That's what it is. That's what it was. That's my mirror, my mirror conversion for my Cortina. I'm going to get metering. I'm going to get soldering. I'm going to get drilling and grommeting and assembling this back up. And then we'll go and route some power feeds into the car. See you in a sec. Well, the mirror is fitted and it's just up there. Now, it's not, of course, night time yet. But it will be by the time I've done my, uh, my gym training. So things are great we're going to check this mirror out just as soon as uh, our first extra high bright motorist hits us in the dark so ruby then a dashboard ruby then a steering wheel ruby then a mirror all ready to go that's nicely wired in it's connected into the reverse gear as well so it won't dim down in reverse so we've got all the wires sorted out the black wire was ground orange was power the purple was the reverse hookup connector so everything's uh, there we just got to test it of course not yet here comes a mr mr bright side there and it is a range rover yeah always the same see that flash then even that at this time of the day caught my eye ridiculous lights paraglider ahead of us as well can you see that paraglider in the top right of your screen I wonder where he's uh, gonna land
So, in an hour or so we shall... So, in an hour or so, we shall check it out. He's really low. The ambient light levels are now falling. It's uh, dashboard and lights on time. So it's time where the mirror will start coming into its own. Let's look for our first offender. I can't see anyone who's got those offending lights. There's one behind me, but it's not set off yet. In fact, you can simulate the mirror dimming down now. Where is the mirror? There's the mirror. If I do. If I put the interior light on it will fool it that something's behind and indeed you can see how it dims out so that's operational see that car going brighter so we're on and we're running we are looking good so it's at the moment it's interpreting the map reading lamp as the offender and when you go into reverse it knocks it out which that's working there's our oh no he's he's got normal lights He's okay, it's the other guy next to him that's got them horrible bright lights. And that's what it's all about, and it's not just me either. It's a whole host of people having problems with the super bright lamps. I think even if it wasn't for the super brights, I still would have had the dimming mirror. Uh, just as a luxury anyway. We always get some in it. There's, here's some super bright lights, look at this, look. Just look at that, I bet that blinds the camera, look at that. Uh, there they are so, so that now is lighting up the whole car and it's actually it feels like someone's welding so my eye actually waters in the corner of my eye like when you get a welding flash that's what them lamp lamps are like they're an absolute joke and i'll keep i've kept saying it haven't i i'm going on about it but they're great for you but they're no good for people sensitive to that light so i've just got to bugger off and not to uh, drive at night or wear dark glasses or have a dimmable mirror there's another one there's two of them actually with these lights or is it just that one offending vehicle i think it's just that one offending vehicle yeah it is now he's quite low down so he's not as whoa 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 i thought that car was going to reverse into me now this is car park lottery I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Look, they've just stopped in the middle of the road. See that? Okay, he's just an old guy. Maybe he's in trouble, I don't know. He could be in trouble. But uh, it's a strange place to stop. Negating me to, don't really know what he's doing. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Here, the lights, look how bright they are on the back of that vehicle there. Look at the white balance, the spectrum there extremely bright let's get out of here and let's switch it off I guarantee it won't take long to find to find an offender that's one now he's, he's adjusted all right he's okay a Range Rover actually of all they're normally the worst but he was okay all halogens so far and then you can see we're already dimming down a little bit now just picking up it's just picking up these lamps coming in and it's not on full darkness yet yet there's a HID there that is a Volvo and he's not too badly adjusted Some crazy loon coming up behind me. I don't know if he's trying to park or not. Let's indicate left. I don't know really what this geezer's doing. He's come in and then he's uh, he's gone out. Watch the Expect a blast of the horn now. Nope. A Volkswagen. Maybe 
everyone everyone seems to be good we're all good no one's no one's uh, got nasty lights it's just there's one coming the other way I can he's actually actually blinding me from here that one oh it's a bus <laughs> there's a bus the buses are at it <laughs> oh poor little bus I love buses as well oh Blooming love buses, but look at the state of it. Ouch. Let's catch the offender. There we go. So we've got we've got one. I think we've got one coming up now. Look at this now. Come on, here we are. Your eyes are already sweltering. Out the pedestrian crossing this one halogen. A bus, it could be the bus. Ah, the mirror's just dimmed down then, it's worked. It's just dimmed down as soon as that, that one came in, that third car. One, two, him. And then this one, can you see the different colour? He's, he's very bright. Oh, he's just mental. What is that? That's ridiculous, whatever that is. It is a Ferrari. So the Ferrari did it the worst, but the, the mirror did the job. As soon as that Ferrari came, I mean that Ferrari's lights must be able to reach like, you know, 500 yards or more. So the Ferrari one was the brightest, and yet that was the lowest of the cars. No point having the window, window up, but the mirror did its job. Dim down well before the car hit me and you can see the ambient light sensor it's just at the top of the mirror well sorry not the ambient light the ambient light sensor behind it the actual the you know the rear facing sensors at the top of the mirror not at the bottom somewhere at the bottom when the light hits the headline in here that's when the mirror comes in and picks that picks it up and when it when it hits just below the headline of course on the mirror Another one there, so this third one now, him, he's 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 ridiculous. Oh whoa! <laughs> See, that actually burnt my eyes. That was a focus with all things, you know. Focus, so his his lights aren't adjusted properly on the focus. This bus is okay, that's got the, the bright lights, but they're they're set okay. This guy, this idiot's got his fog lights on. Let's give him but well, he's not got he's just on halogens but with his fog lights. Whoa! That thing is just ridiculous. So they're even getting you from the front. So <clears throat> I think it's a combination of these new bright lights and probably my, the aging of my eyes. I'd say it's a mixture of the two that's causing this to happen. Mirror dimming down as another one comes along. He's really bright. That's a Range Rover. There's another one with those bluish sort of lenses and it very, really really bright lighting into the car up that's a Range Rover and then a BMW also I think it was a Range Rover Peugeot 205 look at that on the H90 a 90 Peugeot 205 there I mean heck oh, you get a bit of classic cars mixed in with this show so without that dimmable mirror I couldn't cope because this this mirror now really I need to turn it away because it's just it's actually dangerous so my side mirror it's actually a hazard for me now anyway you get the picture I'll not do any more the mirrors doing its job see how it's gone back to normal again I mean and you most of you <laughs> have these mirrors and I'm just telling you something you already know but it's just nice to see it in a Cortina and it does work with those really far reaching lamps so that's what we want it to do so that's a, another nice job done let's get out of here